Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is me, it is me, it is NLG here, episode 44 of the NYCW series is here, and it's the series finale, and I think it's sad that the series has to end now, but it kind of does, because TW 2020 comes out in a couple months, a lot of our storylines can end on this show. Now, I had two options, either end it well with everything ending on this show, or just keep going and have everything come to an abrupt end in a couple of months where it doesn't feel like it's got an actual conclusion. I've really enjoyed this series over the last 11 months, and it's doing well for views, so I'm guessing everyone else has been too. And I think it's earned its own little proper farewell. We're a small company in the two months before TW 2020. We're not going to reach the heights of global, which means the challenge is a failure, technically. But we will be back with a local or global in Britain this time to switch things up when TW 2020 drops. So that will be happening and we will go all the fucking way and we will smash our challenge out. But yeah, I've really enjoyed this one. But it's just not quite being able to get there. I think if it started a year or two earlier, we would have got there. But hey ho, SpaghettiOs, let's start the show. So the final ever show, last shot in front of a sold out crowd, the Manhattan Centre, opens with a six way scramble featuring six of the finest women's wrestlers in the world as Evie debuts, defeating Hannah Kimura, Holly Dead, Kaylee Ray, Kimberly, and Kylie Ray in 12 04, pinning Holly Dead with a top rope splash. Yep, Evie did really well, so did Kaylee Ray there, as did Kimberly. In another world, we would have crowned a women's champion, but in this world, we didn't crown a women's champion. So, au revoir ladies, auf Wiedersehen, pet. As then, in a 43D, Selena De La Renta comes out the ring with Puma King, and she says the Davy Vega sucks. Which is a mean thing to state, because what he does in his own time... It's down to him. We don't need to know what Davey Vega does. If he wants to do that, that's fine. But anyways, the first one-on-one -on -one contest the show ends in just shy of 10 minutes when Davey Vega hits Puma King with a Yakuza kick, kicks him back into the wild, and Davey Vega gets a solid, impressive victory to round off the series for himself. His partner Matt Fitchett is in action later on tonight, as we then have a triple threat couples tag team match. As Dogger and Tessa Blanchard are crowned the king and queen of wrestling, as they beat Andrew Everett and Shazza McKenzie, and also Diana Prazo and the villain Marty Skrull. In 1336, when Dogger ruled up Diana Prazo for the win, some solid performances there from Shazza and Everett. Marty Skrull and Dogger doing phenomenally well, and it's weird to see Tessa Blanchard not doing well there because she's great in real life. Also, being racist in real life. But yeah, the less said about that, the better. But they do have cute matching jackets. Oh, bless. We then have a 60 seat where Eddie Kingston defeats Matt Cross in 1329 with a back fist of the future. Eddie Kingston, one of my all time favourite wrestlers. There was no way he was losing on the last episode of the series. Farewell to Eddie Kingston, a former King of New York tournament winner. He never did get to hold the gold, but that's fine. Because not everyone does, because if everyone held the gold, the gold wouldn't mean anything. As we then have a 43D, where in a match that's disappointed me, David Starr defeated Space Monkey in 1429 with a product placement. I feel like that would be a great match. David Starr gets the victory. What a star he is. Ah, oh, that match sucked. Fuck, man. I had high hopes, you know? I had high hopes. Then the 71C plus Matt Fitchett finally beats Matt Seidel here in NYCW. It took him 23 minutes and 50 seconds, but he didn't beat him once, he beat him twice by two straight falls. The final fall happened with a rock and rook knee, and Matt Fitchett has finally got one over Matt Seidel in a brilliant match there. We then have a 3017 minus where Selena De Laurenta says that tonight Diamante Promotions leave how they entered as champions. And so they lose, as in, 58 min in, in a 58 team minus in 15 minutes and 40 seconds, the Saucy Daddies defeat Diamant A Promotions. The two former world champions are now tag champions. Tracy Williams pins Pestia triple safe with a pile driver. He finally gets a win. 
he finally gets a win. Tracy Williams hadn't won in so long. He wins the tag team gold with his best friend. And they have a big hug. That turn that's being teased, it doesn't happen. They're happy. Even if he doesn't look happy, he's happy deep down. A big win for the saucy daddies. As then, a 51 day plus in your main event of the evening. It's Korea versus Championship. And in a TLC bout, Josh Briggs defeats Jacob Fatu in 1940, retrieving the heavyweight championship. Josh Briggs is your first ever two time champion. Jacob Fatu, for the first time in his NYCW four year career, has lost. What a time to be alive. Alright, fuck off as if Jacob Fatu can't brawl. He's Jacob Fatu, man. But yeah, that's the show. And I feel like it's at times like this that we need a speech. We really do need... You know, it's like every wedding has a speech. Every funeral has a speech. The biggest moments, the most important moments in life, all top ceremonies do have a speech. And so I think that it's only fair that we have a speech to really describe how much this series meant to us. And I've got some words that I'd like to say to describe how I do feel about what's probably the best series I've ever done. So, here goes, I've wrote them down. If you give me a second here, I'm just gonna have a quick drink beforehand. <clears throat> you think I'm pretty without any makeup on. You think I'm funny when I tell the punchline wrong. I know you get me, so I'll let my walls come down. Da ha hound. Before you met me, I was alright, but things were kinda heavy. You brought me to life now every February. You be my Valentine. Valentine. Let's go all the way tonight. No regrets, just love. We can dance until we die. You and I will be young forever. You make me feel like I'm living a teenage dream. The way you turn me on, I can't sleep. Let's run away and don't ever look back. Don't ever look back. My heart stops when you look at me. Just one touch. Now, baby, I believe this is real. So take a chance and don't ever look back. Don't ever look back. That is about a third of the lyrics to that song. I can't be asked to read out the rest, it's a long song. But yeah. Oh, the company died. Ah, oh, well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know, as I mentioned, when things die in life, you need to give a speech to really say how you felt. And I just so happen to have a perfect speech to really sum up how much GWF? Meant to me, yeah, GWF. Tumble out of bed and stumble to the kitchen. Pour myself a cup of ambition and yawn and stretch and try to come to life. Jump in the shower and the blood starts pumping. Out on the streets the traffic starts jumping for folks like me on the job from 9 to 5. Working 9 to 5, what a way to make a living. Barely getting by, it's all taken and no given. They just use your mind and they never give you credit. It's enough to drive you crazy if you let it. The words of Dolly Parton there. What a lovely lady she is. Massive boobs as well. We have some mail. David Starr relocates. He's also just left the company. Matt Cross thinks he should be booked better. That's a you problem, Matt. Not a me problem. You will never be booked better. This series has died now, unfortunately. King of New York Heritage, Josh Briggs, Chris Dickinson, Matt Seidel and Eddie Kingston all got to sit on the throne, which is what I call the toilets, fun fact. The heavyweight title, Josh Briggs was our first champion, he held it for over yet 12 defences. Chris Dickinson held it for 5 defences from October to June. Tracy Williams held it a half year, he had 3 defences. Jacob Fatu with 11 defences held it for 14 months. And Josh Briggs still has the best reign in NYCW history. Our only other tag team champions were Angel Garza and Bestia Triple Six until tonight when the Saucy Daddies won the gold. And the, D uh, the tag team invitational, sorry, was won by Garza and Bestia in October. If we have a look at the creative meeting, 
Eddie Kingston, Matt Tidal, Jacob Fatu, Kaylee Ray and Matt Cross are our boys. We've got some hot prospects there, some people who can talk, some people who, sh just who stop the show, some ring generals there, people who are hot, people who aren't hot, which is very mean to Kylie Ray, Ho Ho Loon, Matt Cross, Eli Everfly and Kurt Stallion. No one on the time decline, there's some hidden gems but I don't care who they are. So yeah, let's have a look at what's happening in the world at this point in time. Of course, AEW died in this save, what feels like so long ago. But WWE has not died. And if we look at their champions, Jey Uso is WWE champion. Cruiserweight champion is Tony Nese again. The Intercontinental champ is Mojo. Fucking hell, that belt went off a cliff, didn't it? Money in the Bank has been won by both Usos and The Bar. Raw tag champs are Fandango and Drew Gulak, which would be a fun team to be fair. The Revival held them for nearly three years. Raw Women's Champion is Aaliyah. The SmackDown Tag Team Champions are DIY. Because when the series started, DIY were on the main roster as a tag team, if anyone remembers that. Rhea Ripley is the SmackDown Women's Champion. She's held that a little while now. Lacey Evans held it for over a year, as did Yo Shirai and Asuka. Louis Martinez is the United States Champion. This started before he was called Damien Priest. Mental. The Universal Champion is Drew McIntyre. Pff, he'll never be champion. The Women's Battle Royal has been won. The Women's Money in the Bank has not been won. The Women's Tag Team Champions are Lacey Evans and Mia Yim, who looks fuming that she's got to be with Lacey Evans. If we have a look at NXT, some people won some tournaments. The NXT Champions, Kyle O'Reilly, who at this point has been in NXT for about six years. Bobby Fish held the belt for two years. Fucking hell. North American Champions, Jonah Rock. I don't know who Darren Sparrow is, I won't lie. NXT Tag Champs are Kyle O'Reilly and Jonah Rock. What? We've got every belt. And the Women's Champion is Sophie Walkinshaw. Who's Sophie Walkinshaw? Oh, right. Someone who's just been generated in the game. She's got much over this. Not really, no. And we'll have a look at everyone's favourite promotion, NXT UK, to round this off. The champions of the tag team division are the Grizzled Young Vets, who beat Stefano Grego and Travis Banks. I'm guessing Stefano is another graduate. And Tony Storm is your women's champion. A lot of defences in those title reigns, and a lot of title reigns too. But yeah, that's pretty much that. We'll have a look at the New Japan title scene and then we'll wrap things up I do believe. Best of Super Juniors was won by Jay White at some point. G1 Climax being held by Minoru Suzuki, fair play, finally got to the top. Heavyweight champion is Romu Takahashi, he, he's on his second reign as champion, fair play to the boy, he's a great wrestler. Intercontinental champion is Haruki Goto, who's held that a year. Takeshi Minamino is junior heavyweight champion, someone I've never heard of I'll be honest. He joined Pineapple Hanai. Okay, fair play to you, Takeshi. Did anyone ever watch Takeshi's Castle, by the way? That was a cracking series. I really did love that back in the day. Um, Dragon Kid and Ryo Saito are your junior everywhere tag team champions. I've got the Dragon Gate closed down. Tag champs are Taioki and Bad Luke Farley. Again, someone I don't know is Taioki. He's been in all Japan pro wrestling. United States Champion is evil, he'd be Tayo Key for it. Same Tayo Key's just reminding us of Tayo Cruz. I remember the song Dynamite, that was a very good song. Will Ospreay is never up with champion for the second time in his career. The six man tag champs are Farley, Evelyn, Sonata. Got Big Daddy Vault as the, as is Doc Gallows. New Japan Cup was won by Naito, Super J Cup by Kota Bushi again and again and again. Super Junior Tag Cup by Jimmy Yuta and Marty Skull. World Tag League by Tanahashi and Naito, what a team that would be. And we'll check Impact as well, in case anyone cares what's happening there. The fourth biggest company in the world. Their knockout champion is Bailey. Their Super X Cup hasn't happened. The world champion is Rey Mysterio, fucking hell. He beat Rey Phoenix for it. How did Austin Aries have back-to-back -back title reigns? Tag champs are Rich Swan and Chris Sabin, because when you can't get Alex Shelley, you turn to Rich Swan apparently. How's Andrew Everett had a reign on his own? And Jeremy Buck is the X Division Champion. Fucking Jeremy Buck, there's a name I didn't think I'd be reading today. Thank you all 
for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed this series. If you have, let me know what your favourite moment of the series was, if you can remember it. If you can't, just comment. I can't wait for TW2020. Please marry me, NLG, and I'll consider the offer. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all later.